Hey there, welcome back to another indie game devlog. This one's going to be a little bit different. It's not about Polar or my mystery project that I've teased a few times. Instead, it's going to be about a whole new project that I'm starting from scratch today and aim to complete over my holiday break of about two weeks. It's going to be a little mobile game about this guy, the Arctic Fox. The gameplay is going to mimic their method of hunting, which is jumping up into the air and dive bombing into the snow to catch critters for dinner. And that's about all I know right now. It's the evening of December 17th, I just finished up my last day of work for the year, and I'm flying to Maine tomorrow to kick off my vacation. I'm just going to spend the night with family tonight since I'm traveling tomorrow, so I'll catch up in the morning before my flight. Welcome back to the morning of December 18th. I just arrived at the airport, ready to catch my 8 a.m. flight that will eventually get me to Portland, Maine. I'd love to get a start on development today, but that seems unlikely to happen on my tiny plane since I'm like 6 foot 3 and have a 15 inch laptop. Instead, I'm going to break out my iPad Pro, Apple Pencil, and a really great app called Pixaki to start work on the pixel art for my game. I'm hoping that with about four hours of flying ahead of me, I can knock out a lot of the art that I'll need for this project. Well, after a lot of time sitting on planes today, I'm happy to report that I've made it to Maine. This is the first time I've been here, and it is really beautiful. Anyway, the good news is that I was actually able to knock out a huge portion of the artwork for my game on my two flights. Here's what we have. First, I created the backdrop for my main scene. I had a pretty clear vision of what I wanted here. A flat, snowy surface for the fox to jump on, and some mountains towering in the background. I put these mountains on three different layers. I'm hoping I'll be able to create some kind of mild parallax effect in the final product to make it look a little bit more unique. This also allows me to move clouds between the mountains, which I think will be a nice touch. Finally, I made a few color variations of this backdrop that I may or may not end up using. Next up is the player character. This was a little bit tricky since I'm really not that great at making pixel art animations yet. Here's what an arctic fox actually looks like when it's jumping, and here's what my little guy looks like. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out, and for now this certainly gives me enough to work with in terms of building out my player object in Unity. I also created a few color variants of this guy, but I'll talk more about why I did that later in the video. Finally, I created some artwork for various pickups that the fox will be able to grab. Two will just add to your score, and one will increase your jumping speed, enabling you to pounce more quickly. So, overall really great progress on the plane today. Not sure how much I'll be continuing to work in the immediate future since I want to enjoy some time exploring this new place. I'll catch up once I've made some more progress. Well, we're going to go ahead and fast forward to December 24th, Christmas Eve, back in my home state. I spent a really wonderful four days in Maine drinking coffee by the fire, looking up at the Milky Way, and exploring a very cold wintry wonderland. Though I didn't really have an opportunity to record for this devlog, I did make quite a bit of progress on the game, which I'm now calling Snow Pounce. I'll go ahead and walk you through what I've done so far. Here's where we sit about six days into the project. The first thing I did was export my art from Pixaki and import it into Unity. This was actually pretty easy since I'm developing this game on my MacBook. All I had to do was export the PNGs from Pixaki directly into my Unity project directory which is in iCloud Drive. From there I could both use the art in the project and check it into my Git repo. With that done I laid out my initial scene, creating game objects for the mountains, clouds, and player. I created objects with different Z values for the different mountain layers so that I can create that parallax effect later. This will also allow the clouds to float between the mountains like I mentioned earlier. With the scene laid out, my first development task was to create the basic player controls that will define gameplay. In Snow Pounce, your objective will be to get the fox to pounce on little critters in the ground. To do this, you'll tap anywhere on the screen and drag down to see a preview of the fox's trajectory. When you release your finger, the fox will jump and follow that path. I want to start off by showing you how I'm drawing this trajectory. I knew that the line renderer was the Unity component I'd want to use for this. All you need to do is give it an array of XY coordinates and a line between those points will be drawn for you. So I had to calculate the various points along my trajectory. Off to Wikipedia I went. I found myself on the projectile motion page, which has a handy list of the formulas I needed to find my coordinates. These are the two that matter most, the x and y displacement at a given time t. 
If I start at t equals zero and define a constant time interval between calculations, I can calculate the x and y coordinates at each step in time with this formula. You'll notice that there are a few more things missing that I need to calculate the displacement. I need the initial velocity, or v0, initial angle at launch, or theta, and a constant for gravity, which is represented by g here. To show you how I obtain these values, I'll head over to the code in Unity. My function called calculate jump points is where all this logic lives. I'll start out with the launch angle here at the top. The angle of the fox's jump will be determined by the difference in where the player tapped on the screen and where they have dragged their finger after tapping on the screen. You can get a vector 3 representation of that displacement simply by taking the difference between those two points as I've done here on the first line. I then use vector3.angle to calculate the angle of that vector against vector3.right, a straight line across the x-axis at y equals 0. Once I convert that angle to radians, I have my value for theta. Next up, the launch force. I want the power of the jump to reflect how far the player has dragged their finger from the touchdown point. I can easily factor this into the jump force by grabbing the magnitude of my target direction vector. For the constant for gravity, I can use the Unity Physics Engine's predefined value, physics2d.gravity.y. The last thing to do is figure out how many points I need to calculate to draw the complete trajectory. This nifty little formula is right below the one for displacement. It allows us to calculate the total flight time. If I have the total flight time and choose to use Unity's fixed delta time as my time step, then I know exactly how many calculations I need to make and the time values for which to make them. The rest of the code in this function uses those formulas to calculate x and y displacement to create the points along the trajectory and add those points to an array. Finally, in my draw path function, I set the positions of my line renderer. I do all of this in the update loop so that the line is refreshed immediately based on the user's input. I think the result is pretty great. After I had the line drawn, it was time to actually program the jump. This turned out to be pretty easy. I already had a list of points along the desired trajectory calculated with Unity's fixed time step. So in fixed update, I just manually moved the fox along those points. With the jump in place, I hooked up my little animation, and that's all the progress I've made up until this point. I've got about a week left until the new year and plenty of work left to do. I'm going to start today on wrapping up the core gameplay loop, and I'll check back whenever that's finished. Alright, it's December 26th, the day after Christmas, and I want to show you a little bit of progress that I've made from a few short bursts of productivity in the past couple days. So what I've basically accomplished here is just laying the groundwork for the main gameplay loop. You can see here I've got this very basic title screen now, and when I hit start, you'll notice a score of zero up at the top and a counter counting down from 30 seconds. You'll also see two things have spawned into this scene here, these little particle emitters. These are meant to represent the lemmings, or the little targets that the foxes try to pounce on. As you might expect, the gameplay is pretty basic. You drag your finger to see the trajectory of the fox's jump, and you release to try and get the fox to jump on these targets. When you hit one, your score goes up, and you kind of continue this process for as long as you can to see how many of these lemmings you can pounce on before your time runs out. Once your time runs out, you can no longer control the fox, and we're back to the title screen. It feels great to have the basic gameplay loop knocked out, but there's still a lot to do in the next five days. Uh, first up are going to be some improvements to target spawning where those little lemmings appear on the ground. And also I need to lay out the groundwork for navigation between a couple different canvases that I want to have and overall just improving the UI because it looks really bad right now. And finally in the near term I want to add an owl that swoops down and that you'll have to jump over if it's going to hit you. This will just add a little bit more difficulty to the game. So today I'm just going to get started on improving this target spawning and I'll let you guys know when I have an update. December 27th. Another day has passed, and I actually made quite a bit of progress yesterday. To start, I made some pretty big changes to how the lemming targets are spawned into the scene. My game manager class now has control of how many targets there are in the scene at any given point in time, and I've given each individual target the ability to appear for a certain amount of time at one location, then move to another. This kind of creates a whack-a-mole effect, where you can miss at the last second if you've taken too long to pounce on a certain target. I also had to address the issue of what happened if the player jumped outside the screen. 
I decided just to programmatically create an edge collider around the bounds of the camera. If the fox hits the collider, I reverse his trajectory along the x-axis to give him a bounce effect. Overall, I think the gameplay is progressing along pretty nicely. Next up, I'll be working on creating an enemy for the game and implementing some sound effects. Alright, I'm back the next day with a quick update on the sound design of Snow Pounce. I reached out to Danny to learn about the tool he uses to create simple sound effects for his games. He recommended a program called SFXR. I went with a slightly updated version for Mac called BFXR. This tool allowed me to create some basic little chiptune noises for jumping, landing in the snow, and scoring a point. Here's what they sound like. Yesterday, I also made some small improvements to gameplay, namely creating targets with different point values. Rather than all the targets being white, we now have blue and orange, which appear less often, are smaller, and reward you with more points if you can pounce on them before they disappear. You'll also notice that I started work on some UI improvements by importing a new font. UI work is far from my favorite, but unfortunately it's what I'll be focusing on next since it's absolutely necessary for a finished product. As always, I'll check in once I get that knocked out. And just like that, we've made it to December 31st, the last day of this project. Yesterday, I wrote approximately zero lines of code. It was beautiful outside all day, about 65 degrees and sunny, and I had family and friends come into town, so we all just spent the day together soaking up some rare December sun and catching up. The day before, though, I had a serious burst of productivity and managed to complete my unlock system for Snow Pounce. I guess I'll start with showing you around the UI I created. I think I found a pretty nice font for the project, not too formal, and kind of matches the cartoony nature of the gameplay. The rest of my UI design will likely remind you of Blink. I have a few canvases for options, unlocks, and an about page where I plan to add content around how I created this game in two weeks and why I chose to make it about the Arctic Fox. If I step into the unlocks page here, you can see that I've created a basic unlock system for four different playable characters. I tried to build upon the feedback I received from Blink by giving each of my playable characters different attributes, which you can see below each image. One fox is pretty well rounded, while the others favor accuracy or speed. I think I'll leave the last one a little bit of a mystery for now. The system is pretty simple and works like you might expect. You navigate to this page, pick a fox, and when you start up your next round you'll be playing as that fox. Right now these guys are unlocked over time as you achieve higher global scores, but I also have the ability to add high score requirements to these unlocks. With the unlock system finished, I really think I'm about 95% of the way to my target of having a complete game at the end of my two week break. I think all I have left before calling it done are a few balance tweaks and some content for my UI. That said, it's New Year's Eve and I'll be visiting some family and helping prep for a party tonight. Next time you see me, I'll be home and we'll check out the finished product. It is now December 8th and time for the final update on Snow Pounce. I'm back home and pleased to report that development on Snow Pounce is complete and the app has been approved for release both by Apple and Google. In an effort to stay true to my challenge, I did in fact finish up my final small UI changes on New Year's Eve and left the game's balance exactly as it was. Since making it back home after the new year, all I've really done is take screenshots, create the game's icon, set up store pages, and send off builds for approval. This two-week challenge was a lot of work, but I'm really happy with one, how the game turned out, and two, how I was able to balance working on the game with spending time with family and friends and going outside and goofing off and relaxing. Basically all the other stuff that I normally do on vacation. But with all that said, let's jump into the final product and I'll walk you through what I was able to build. First I'll mention the artwork. This was the first part of the game that I tackled and I honestly haven't touched it since I created it on the plane two weeks ago. There are some imperfections in the clouds and mountains, but overall I think it looks pretty good and I honestly just didn't have time to improve it before the end of my two weeks. You'll also notice I didn't have time to create the parallax effect I initially envisioned for the mountains or implement my backgrounds with alternate color schemes. I also did not get the chance to implement the little pickups that I drew. That'll make for a good future update, I think. After I had my artwork created, my focus for the next 10 days or so was entirely on gameplay. I started with the jumping mechanic for the fox. I pretty much got this working in one day after tracking down some formulas on Wikipedia and using those to draw out the fox's flight path and ultimately move his rigid body component to complete the jump. Next up came the targets for the fox to jump on. My target consists of a particle system and a box collider 2D. I created a script for my target object to control how it moves around the scene and how it determines a new point value or rarity each time it moves. 
With the player and the target set up, I just had to capture collisions between the two and track the score. I also made some tweaks here and there to smooth out the gameplay experience, but this is really the entirety of the core gameplay loop. Once the gameplay loop was in place and I was capturing scoring correctly, I had to quickly throw together a UI. I managed to very slightly improve on my process here compared to how I designed the UI for Blink. I still have a bunch of canvases for each screen, but I created a navigation manager class whose sole responsibility was to manage the activation and inactivation of these canvas game objects. This really cleaned up the code in my main game manager class and helped me implement navigation very quickly. One thing I did add to the game since I got back from holiday was the incorporation of Unity ads. And this kind of didn't sit right with me for a while. I worried about showing ads to users in a game with such little content, and I still kind of do. But at the same time, I spent a lot of my hours of my break working on this game, and I am kind of trying to create a side income stream from this hobby since I put so many hours into it. So I tried to strike a balance. What I decided to do was add both interstitial and optional rewarded ads, but give the user the opportunity to opt out of interstitial ads for free. A 99 cent in-app purchase to remove ads felt like too much for this very simple game, so I decided just to let you, the user, decide if you want to support me or not. This is a little experiment that's probably not going to work out well in my favor, but we'll see how it goes. Above all else, I hope you just download the game, give it a try, and enjoy it. So, with all that said, here is the finished product on my iPad. By the time you're watching this video, Snow Pounce will be available for download on iOS and Android for free, so go check it out. I hope you enjoyed this kind of crazy, kind of different devlog. I know I had a ton of fun making Snow Pounce, and I definitely learned a lot about what I can accomplish in two weeks of hard work. In the coming weeks, I will be back to work on Polar. Until then, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.